Hi, and thank you for joining us here at Living Life. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy about teaching a baptism class is that I get to hear the testimonies of, of all the people who are going through uh, the baptism course. And so one of the things that we also try to encourage people as maybe some of them are not used to sharing uh, their testimony is that we try to help them uh, form their own story, their life story. And so we usually share with them that it should involve three things. And the first thing that we tell them is that you should talk about what your life was uh, before you met Christ. And so this all looks different for each person, for every individual, um, how they grew up or what things that they were involved in. And then we also want to find out how they encountered Christ. Um, and so for some of them, it may have been a gradual thing. Um, perhaps they grew up hearing the gospel. Or for others, it was a total foreign thing that no one had ever explained to them. Uh, and then how they accepted Christ. And then the last portion is um, how God has changed their future and what their life now looks like in Christ. And so we see how testimonies can be powerful and how people can connect with the other person's story and how it leads it can lead others to Christ as we see as we'll see in today's passage. John chapter 4 verses 31 through 42. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, Four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. So as we continue in our study of John chapter 4, uh, we see that uh, Jesus is the source of eternal life. And so at this point, uh, Jesus must have been exhausted uh, from all the traveling that he, he just did. And so the disciples who appear on the scene uh, were concerned about uh, the physical welfare of Jesus. And so they wanted to make sure that he was taken care of and that he's well fed and that he's ready and prepared uh, for the journey and for ministry uh, that he's been doing. And so they asked him uh, if he's eaten or if he's okay. And they're amazed because of the response that Jesus gives them. And so they're wondering if someone had brought him food. Uh, because he talks about uh, that his food comes from doing the will of the Father. And so what he's trying to convey to his disciples is that uh, he is more concerned about doing spiritual things more than about worldly things. And that doing ministry gave him a greater satisfaction than any food will ever do. And so uh, whenever we eat food, you know, we're given energy and it, it helps us to make it through each and every day and we need it to survive. Uh, but for Jesus, uh, more than food, uh, doing ministry was what drove him, is what fed him uh, physically at that point. And so what Jesus was trying to convey was that he is uh, the bread of life, that through him is how people can get saved 
that uh, the gospel is about proclaiming the good news that is found in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus was more concerned about saving lives uh, than about and to do spiritual things than about worldly things. And so for the disciples, they were still uh, trying to understand the teachings that uh, Christ was trying to provide for them and understanding uh, where He's coming from. And so even when Jesus is saying that He is the way, the truth, and the life, uh, for them, they still didn't understand this concept. Or when Jesus is saying that He is the living water, or that He is the bread of life, that that he is saying that this is one of the I am statements uh, in the book of John. That he is making a, a profound statement uh, saying that he is God and one of the ways that he is God is that he's able to feed his people um, that they will have eternal life through him and him alone. And so Jesus challenges his disciples to look and to see the harvest that is before them. That everywhere that they go, that there are lost people all around. And when you see a harvest that's ripe and ready to be harvested, you're not just going to sit there and let the fruit rot, but rather it's time to pick it and for it to be used. And so you don't want it to be wasted away. In the same way, we can't delay our approach uh, to evangelism and missions. That we all we should always be aware of the people who are in desperate need of the gospel. Um, but the other thing that we see here in this passage is uh, the power of our testimony. And so now the, the scene shifts uh, back to the Samaritan woman. And a result of after she has just heard the gospel, she encountered a man who was the Messiah, who knew everything about her and who offered her eternal life. And we see that when this woman arrives and goes back to the town that she's from, she immediately tells everyone that she knows, every person that she comes across, her neighbors, uh, the people on the streets, she tells them that she has met the Messiah, that she met a man who knew everything about her. And one of the things that we tell people uh, when they give their testimonies is that it should be centered upon Jesus. And that it should never be about us, but rather our testimonies uh, at the end of the day should be about boasting in God. And so, because too often I've seen testimonies where people uh, dwell too much on the past, where they talk about the kind of person that they were before, if they were a radically different person, and they spend most of the time talking about that. And then what ends up happening is that people will only remember what that person was like. But rather, our, our testimony should be focused on Christ and what He did and how He saved and changed us. And so we want people left being in awe of God and inspired by what He is doing and what He can do in the life of a person who doesn't know Christ. And this is what we see happening in this woman that this is the key and the power behind her testimony. That when she tells people, it's not about her, but she wants people to know that they too can know Christ, that they too can see this Savior who saved her and can save them as well. And so let's make our stories and our testimonies about Christ as well. And so as we look at our own testimonies, and we, our tes- testimonies can change and evolve over time, but let's make sure that our testimonies are centered about Christ, that we are boasting about Him and how good He's been and how He's changing our lives and, and establishing things that we never would have imagined or expected. So let's pray for that in our lives and the people that it can draw others to Christ through the stories that we share about Him. Let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you that you are changing us, that you are changing people, and that uh, you uh, want us to boast about you. And so we thank you that it's not about us. And so, Father, we, we thank you, that, Lord, that the light isn't focused upon us, but we want people to come away with seeing a Savior 
who loves us, who has changed us, and can do anything uh, for those who trust in you. And so we just really pray that our, our testimonies will be shaped and centered around that, and that people can come to hear the gospel uh, because of our testimonies and because of what you've been doing in us. And so we give all thanks to you uh, whose, whose lives have been changed because of the cross. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.